Hey guys and welcome to my AAI Programmable Structures and Vehicles mod tutorials. So in this first one I'm going to show you what all of the structures are, what all the vehicles are, what they do and what you can use them for. Uh, I'm going to do it really quick because most of this stuff you can just read off of the ve the item or the entity in, uh, descriptions. So there's literally not much point in me doing it but I thought just to cover all my bases I would do this because we're going to build upon the knowledge that I I impart upon you in this first episode so that you can then do some more interesting things. So, uh, we're currently playing on sandbox mode just so that I don't have to worry about items or resources or anything like that, just so I can show you exactly what it is. Let's have a look at these uh, little radar looking things and I'm going to, as you can see, I've named them tile zone unit and data and that corresponds to what they are. So this is a, the top row are all scanners and the bottom row are all controllers and they scan the tiles uh, and control the zones, the unit and the data. So what's the tile scanner and why doesn't it have a dong? Um, so the, the tile scanner, basically what you can do is with a combinator you can input either a distance, which is a, a new combinator signal that you can use um, just for uh, programmable vehicles and structures. And what it'll do is it will scan a random tile within that distance, within that, the distance acts as a radius, so one tile out of it. Um, and it will scan that tile and feed back exact, uh, exact data on that tile. So as you can see, it's scanned. Um, the tile that it's standing on, uh, actually the tile that is input terminal is standing on, so it's this tile here behind the, the GUI. Um, this tile right here is scanned by one of these two tiles. Um, it's telling you that the x coordinate of that tile is negative 41, the y is negative 169, the, uh, the actual ground is land and not water, so that's either a land or a water signal, it always will be, um, that there is a signal input terminal there and the tile scanner is there. Then if I increase this to 100 radius, it will scan a 100 radius block. And you can see that if I try and get this at the right time. Come on. Oh my god. Ah, I got it there and I closed it. Oh my god, come on. Done that again. There we go. So we managed to get it. It's scanning in a hundred tile radius of itself and it's just managed to pick up one of the tiles that the zone controller is sitting on. That's negative 33, negative 163 and it's got a land signal. So the the way that this scans is using a random algorithm that is center weighted. So if you give it 100 distance then it'll scan out to 100 and we'll only uh, will tend to prefer the center ones. So it's actually very inaccurate and inefficient because it sits and scans the exact same tiles over and over and over and over and over again which is a royal pain but that is the easiest way to work it shove in a radius and tell it to do it um, if you want to scan a very specific tile you can then submit a x tail coordinate and a y tail coordinate and it will scan that exact tile for you and tell you exactly what's there so this is saying at Y1, X1, there is one land signal. Unfortunately, you can never scan the origin. So you can never scan 0, 0 because you, if you send uh, 0, X and 0, Y, which is effectively a no signal to it, it switches off. But you can scan X1 and Y1 if you turn Y to 0, so it's not sending a, a Y signal, it will scan um, X, X1, Y0 and that's fine. But if you send both of them to zero, nothing. So if one of the signals is zero, then it will assume that um, if you're not sending one signal, it will assume that the other signal you want to send is a zero. Alright, so that is how that works. Now you can see there it's found some trees which actually labels wood and that is important. So I think it was X3, yeah. X3, Y1, there's a tree which gives four raw wood. So it actually tells you exactly what's on it as if you mouse your, uh, put your mouse over it. So it says there's four raw wood there, which is, like I said, very helpful for something that you would want to do with the next scanner. So next scanner is a zone scanner. So you can input a zone type. And let's actually talk about zones right now. So let's grab my 
uh, my zone planner, which is basically like a, an upgrade planner or a, a construction or deconstruction planner, except what you can do is you can specify zones with it, and zones come very in very handy when you're using the other, uh, the unit controllers and the unit scanners. But first off, what we're going to look at is let's place a, place a zone manually. So we'll place a green disc and we'll spread it out. And there you go. So there we've got a green disc zone labelled. So this means that we can scan the green disc zone. And if we output zone 1 and tell the zone scanner to scan it, then this will tell us all the details about zone 1. The zone 1 is this zone here. It will go zone 1, zone 2, zone 3, zone 4, zone 5, all the way down the line to zone 110, because that's how many I made. Uh, it's outputting quantity of type signal, which is how many of that signal there actually is in the world. Uh, outputs the actual zone that we've searched, which is zone disc green 1. It's then giving me the subtile position signal, which is a bit funky. Um, I don't I don't like these because I don't quite understand them. I've even asked Erendel, Erin, Jesus, get his name right, Sejo. Erendel, the mod creator, exactly what they mean, and he tried to explain, and it just didn't it didn't work for me. Um, there is a little bit of a description that doesn't actually mean what it says it means. So basically, the description says that the subtitles are. Uh, the same as the coordinates, but you can give them to ignore Biter AI when it comes to the, the unit controller, which we'll get to later on, but it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. I think it might be bugged, but uh, don't say that. Uh, so the next thing it gives us is the, the X and Y coordinates for zone disc green 1. So that's the X and Y coordinates of that uh, zone there. Um, as I said, that one's zone 1, that one's zone 2, that one's zone 3, that one's zone 4. So what happens if I remove, with shift drag, zone 1? Okay, zone 1's still there on the the zone scanner because it's actually finding it, although now it says that there's 109. But zone 1's still there even though I removed it, but you'll see that the X and Y have changed, or at least the Y has changed because it's moved uh, no, I think the X has changed because it's moved a long one. So this is now zone 1. So basically, all the zone numbers gets, get knocked back one. So there's always going to be a zone 1. And that's important to remember for other stuff that we're going to be doing. The next thing we can do is the zone controller. So what happens with the zone controller is you can either set zones with it by inputting a zone and an X and Y coordinate. Or you can remove zones by inputting no zone but an X and Y coordinate. So, something very simple that we can do with this right now, if we bust out the arithmetic combinators, um, if we make that plus and plus, and set this to filter out only the X and Y zones, uh, the X and Y signals, sorry. Oh, helps if I can type. So if we make that signal Y and signal X, And we hook that up to the end of this, so that will output only the X and Y signal as opposed to all the other junk, because we want to strip the the actual zone signal, the zone disk green from this. Another way that you could do it is by selecting this and hitting zone disk green, take away zone disk green, output. Is it anything? Everything? Okay, that doesn't work. Never mind. My bad. This is the only way to do it. <laughs> That's, that should have worked. I don't know why Factory doesn't let you do it. Regardless, if we stick this in here, and warning, this is going to go pretty quick because it's going to uh, operate on every tick. You'll see. Uh, it did go down. It did change the Y. And that's it removed every green zone. So, once again, if I select this and select another set, you can see it removing all the green zones. So you can do some pretty nice things with combinators to make it work out different bits and bobs. And you can also, as I says, mark zones with this. So why would you want to mark a zone? That comes in when you're trying to send things to zones because you will want to have something easy that you can use combinators with. Instead of having to specify exact X and Ys all the time, you can just send them to zones. Um, and then use the, the zone controller to get the X and Y from that. 
and have something else marking zones um, which we'll show you probably be in the, the next episode I'll show you how to mark zones automatically and exactly what you want to do with that but let's go on to the unit controller and what you can do with the unit controller so if I grab myself a minor which there should be I'll just control F it all right if I grab my myself a vehicle mining uh, a mining ve a vehicle mining a mining vehicle mark 5 boom there's a big big mining vehicle mark 5 there are some extra arrows and things don't worry about that that is mostly because I'm running on a an experimental build of the game right now uh so uh, an experimental build of the the mod right now because there was a couple of issues uh I cannot grab just coal I can get crush coal but no actual coal uh, what do I want? Give me some, give me some rocket fuel. Okay, I will fuel this thing with rocket fuel. I'll be flying along the place. All right, so we have a mining vehicle Mark V. So what I can do is I can use the unit scanner to scan everything about this mining vehicle Mark V. So if I grab a, I'll use green wire. We've been using green wire all the time. If I grab that and say Mining vehicle mark five ID and it's ID one. And if you want, to, if you ever want to know what ID things are or any of the vehicles, you can grab your unit remote controller, which you start the game with if you've got AI vehicles or structures installed, and you can select it. This will tell me that this is unit type ID. So type ID means the mining vehicle mark one ID number one. This changes the exact same as the zone ID changes when you get more or less. Uh, mining vehicles but the thing that doesn't change is the actual unit id so this is unit id one meaning it's the first vehicle that i have placed on this map and that is its exact id if you pick this up and drop it down again it loses its id and that will now become unit id two as you can see it's still mining vehicle one because we've only got one of them okay so if i want to find out anything about mining vehicle one then i can plug that into the unit scanner and that will tell me there is one mining vehicle, which is mining vehicle 1, which is unit signal ID 2. It is going at negative 2 meters per second right now. But the the reason you'll see if you mouse over it swaps between 0.4 and negative 0.4 kilometers per second. That is so that it can continue its animation because vehicles cannot have an animation without moving. So if there's any confusion about that, there you go. Uh, then the angle of which it's moving, which is 90 degrees. The amount of health it's got, the subtitle it's on and the X and Y tile position that it's on. You can also see the amount of energy it's got left, the time since it was last locked, the time since it was last moved, and the time since it last got a command, and how many inventory slots it's got. These can all be used for very interesting things. For example, if you, you can sense when a mining vehicle has less than X amount of inventory slots, and then you can send a hauler vehicle to go and collect from it. So that's, for example, just one thing that you can do with this. So how would you go about doing that? Well, you would use the unit controller. So what you can do is you can send in a an ID. So let's say the mining vehicle 1. And you can also send a X and Y coordinate into there. So what's this X and Y coordinate? 3 and 1. So we'll use that. And we'll use mining vehicle mark 1. Uh, main vehicle mark 5 signal 1 and we'll send that and you can see must have accidentally took that back you can see that this vehicle will now head its way using derpy biter ai all the way to x tail 3 y tail 1 you can see him going it'll probably <laughs> i was going to say it'll probably end up in the middle of these trees somewhere word of warning though that if you give a X and Y coordinates in the middle of a uh, set of trees and the miner has been given just the coordinates and not subtail or anything like that so it's using the derpy biter AI then it will do some funny things where it tries to path around so one of the cool things about these miners is they will chop down trees as well they will chop down trees and fill up their fuel inventory with the trees so it's pretty cool so they will uh, 
they will self fuel themselves if they're if that's what they're mining or if they're mining coal or uh i think that's about it coal and trees as you can see as it's running over the steerotite here um which is a angel's ore it's also collecting that i'm finding it hard to click on this because of the the daft thing that was changed there we go so you can see it's slowly collecting, or quickly, because it's the Mark V, uh, steer tight as it drives over it. So that's what the miner, the mining vehicle does anyway. Alright, so the next thing that we've got to look at is the data scanner and the data controller. So what we can do is if we select our mining vehicle again, best way to do this is copy and paste in that. And don't, don't worry about what I've set up here, I'll explain that a little bit later. So you can see that our... Uh, that the data scanner will scan the data from the mining vehicle and what's the data so we've got something that's a unit scanner and that tells us what it's got on it so as you can see oh I don't want to select a signal because that doesn't work so we can look at the what a vehicle's actually got in it there but then the data scanner is shown things like negative one copper ore negative one iron ore negative one steer tie like and 50 raw wood 100 coal like what's that so, what that means is, with it being at negative 1, that means that it will actively try to export any of that item if it comes in contact with either a hauler or a vehicle depot container. And if you are uh, looking at a hauler, then that means it will try to export that to pretty much anything that it comes in contact with. It will try and just spit stuff out. The other thing you've got is the raw wood and the coal, so that will try to take raw wood off of something, either a hauler or a vehicle depot container, up into uh, 50. It doesn't mean that it'll dump out anything over 50, it will just take up into 50 if it doesn't have that. So imagine it like a logistics request amount. So the next thing that we've got to do is have a look at the unit data controller, which can control the data. So what you can change on this is all of these things. So if I say that I only want this to grab, uh, I only want it to export crontinium and I want it to keep all of its stereotype, then I can change it so that the the crontinium is at negative one but the stereotype uh, um, isn't either isn't mentioned or if I want to keep just a stockpile of it, say a thousand. The best way to show you what you can do with the data controller is actually to use a hauler. So we've got a little hauler, which is the next uh, the next vehicle, the next logical vehicle on the step, and I'll show you all the different vehicles once I've finished with this. But we've got we've got a hauler, so the hauler ID uh, is going to be one. So we've got hauler ID one. Then you can see all the haulers data. So the hauler will actively try to take twelve thousand copper, iron, blah 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 blah, and twelve thousand wood. So literally, it'll try to fill up its inventory because that's all it can carry um, with all of these items. Okay, so what if I say I want, uh, let's have a look at the at this vehicle. So this vehicle's got a load of raw wood in it, but I kind of want it to keep the raw wood because that's what's fueling it. But I want to bring the stereotype back. So if I want to tell my hauler who currently takes wood that I just want him to take stereotype, then I can output the hauler ID, then tell him that I want him to take steer tight but not take wood so currently he's just set to steer tight now so he won't pick up anything else all right and then what we can do is we can grab our hauler and if we set our hauler to this that will send it to the exact same coordinates as what we're already sending the mining vehicle mark 5 to so if i paste that over there you'll see that the hauler will freak out because of the fact that I didn't give it any uh, I'll go with some solid fuel there we go so the hauler's got some solid fuel and all of these vehicles you can actually drive yourself so if I wasn't playing on sandbox mode I could push enter and jump into it and drive it around and have some fun but there you can see it's using its AI to head over to the main vehicle mark 5 and it will Inventory transfer, do you see that? And it's taken all of the stereotype. So it's now just like punching the mining vehicle mark 5 because they're both supposed to be on the same place. So it's now constantly just going to transfer the inventory from the mining vehicle mark 5 to the hauler and nothing else because I haven't set up anything else. But 
if we were to, let's for example, grab a blue disc and put it under the vehicle depot container and tell the vehicle depot container, which this is the depot exchange data, which is the exact same as the unit data except for the depot. We can say that I want you to take, uh, what was it called? I forgot the name of the, the ore now. Steer it tight. So if I grab this, go steer it tight, max that out, the depot will override stuff like this for the hauler. So if I have color coded that a blue circle, told it I want steer it tight. So if I change this from zone X cyan to zone disc cyan, we will see our little derp over here, a little derpy hauler is on his way. And then he'll get to the depot container and drop some stuff off. Don't 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 look at the man behind the curtain over there. That's for another tutorial. <laughs> Alright. Boom! And then he's transferred all of that stereotype instantly into the vehicle depot container. You can then do all sorts of things with this. For example, um if I wanted, I could grab some extremely fast belt and shove an extremely fast loader and get the the resources out of it. I can then grab a loader to put it back in. So beautiful. So you can use loaders, you can use um, inserters, you can use pretty much anything that you can vanilla factorio with this vehicle depot container and as you can see it's got a massive massive container space so the fun actually comes in when you start automating things so you start telling the hauler when to go to the the miner and the miner when to move away etc etc which is what this stuff down here is for but we'll get to that in a different episode the one last thing that we've got to talk about is so this little exchange data thing here is literally the exact same as the unit data. Use it the exact same way if you want the if you want this to pull take only stereotype, only put stereotype in. If you want it to um export anything, so for example, if you want it to export coal, you can put negative one coal, it will export coal, etc. etc. So it's it's all the exact same issue. So basically if you've got something set up, so if I have my hauler to accept solid fuel, so if I do solid fuel uh, 100, all right, and get this one to say export solid fuel. If my hauler doesn't have solid fuel on it, but there's solid fuel in here, you'll see, it just gets transferred straight into my hauler Perfect. And uh, the hauler will always make sure it's got 100 solid fuel. <laughs> Let's get all that stuff back in. There we go. So where it says 100 though, you've got to remember that that means in its inventory, not in its fuel inventory. The fuel inventory doesn't get counted for anything. The inventory does, but they will use fuel out of their, out of their actual trunk as opposed to their fuel inventory. So bear that in mind. Let's get my speedy robots to clean that up. Okay, so the last uh, building that we've actually got to look at is the vehicle deployer. So the vehicle deployer is essentially the unit the unit data controller, except you can use vehicles. So if I select exactly what this is, you can deploy vehicles with it, and then tell it to use the unit uh, data the, the the vehicle depot deployer deployed unit data. Frickin' heck. So if I tell that to do something very specific, for example, 100,000 stereotype and 100 solid fuel, then spit out a hauler, you will see if I then change this hauler ID to 2, that this new hauler that we've just spat out has 100,000 stereotype and 100 solid fuel. So that's a way that you can automate things by you can pull things from a chest and put it put it in to be deployed with a very specific set of instructions. You can also have a 
uh, combinator wired up to the instruction set so you can give it different instructions depending on different things. Obviously you wouldn't use a constant combinator but you would use a, a set of combinators like arithmetic combinators or decider combinators to make some interesting convoluted contraption to tell the things exactly what you want to launch. You can also use that to control filters so that you can put different things in it. It's just it's fantastic. The entire point of this mod is so that you can program extremely intricate and awesome things that will automate your life. And I absolutely adore it. But let's go and have a look at the other vehicles. So there's a number of vehicles. You've got the... there's a number of types of vehicles. So you've got your miners, all the different levels of miners. You've got a hauler, you've got a chain gunner, a flame tumbler and a laser tank. Yep. That's a laser tank. So you've got Miner Mark 1. Mark 2. That was a Mark 2. It was a Mark 2. It's just very subtly coloured. The Mark 3, the Mark 4 and the Mark 5. And as you can see they get more and more advanced as they go up. And their mining speed and mining power also go up. So the you'll see the, the difference. Let's actually head down to the stereotype. And you'll see. So look at how quickly this is mining some stereotype. Not very. Probably got something to do with the fact that it just ran out of fuel. But you'll see that this isn't very quick at mining the stereotype. Whereas if I place one of these down, big difference. The the mining vehicle Mark Vs are actually incredibly quick. Okay, what the next thing is is the hauler that we've already looked at. It basically goes round and picks stuff up, drops stuff off. So your, your multi-purpose vehicle. Your chain gunner is essentially just a turret on wheels. It is very, very good. It doesn't get turret bonuses, but it gets every other weapon research bonus. So they are very strong. Build a couple of them at the start of the game, order them around with your unit remote controller using... Uh, you just drag like a bounding box like any RTS and then shift bounding box and they will move. And you can have your own portable little turret creep. It is phenomenal. Do I have any? I've got a piece of solid fuel. There you go. The next thing that we've got is the flame tumbler, which is meant for ramming. You can use it yourself. It looks awesome, and it's got a flamethrower on it. As long as you give it ammo, of course. Same with the turret. You need to give the turret ammo. The last thing is extremely powerful. It's the laser tank. The laser tank itself is pretty, like... A lot of health, decent resistances, and it shoots a piercing laser shot. It is crazy. It is end, super end game, but it is very, very good. As you can see, it takes a tank, a laser turret, and some... Well, the electronic circuit board is a pretty late game when it comes to uh, Bob's Angels stuff. And once again, all of this can be controlled either with your vehicle remote or using your unit controller. So it is awesome. But I'm going to end it there, end this tutorial episode there. And in the next one, I'm going to talk about the uh, tile scanner. So how you can use the tile scanner the uh, and the zone controller and some circuit wizardry to automatically designate zones. But until then, and as always, I've been Studio, you've been awesome, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.